Ah, now it is in this context that Jesus teaches three practices that surprises everybody. Here's the first practice that he teaches that I suggest we try for 30 days. Practice number one, we should practice this. Say, practice it. Practice. We should practice what he taught, critiquing your own and celebrating the other. Critiquing your own and celebrating the other. What's fascinating is that as Jesus tells this story, he's literally critiquing his own. He's critiquing his own racial ethnic group because he's really challenging Jewish people and Jesus is Jewish. He's critiquing his own religion. Uh, uh, he's challenging the Jewish leadership who are executing their religion and Jesus practices Judaism. He's critiquing his own religious class, the, 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 the teachers, the rabbis, and, and Jesus is a part of that religious class. He is teacher. He's critiquing them. Notice how he does it. He, 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 he points out that it's a Jewish man that is attacked and is lying there bleeding to death and dying. And then he says that by chance, a Jewish priest comes along, and when he sees the man lying there, he crosses over to the other side, pass by, and does nothing. And then he says, uh, uh, and then there's another Jewish leader, the temple assistant, uh, sometimes called the Levite, walked over. He actually walked over and looked. And then after looking at the guy, the Jewish guy lying there, this man passes by on the other side and does nothing. And these Jewish religions, the religious leaders, listening to Jesus tell this story, he knew they were talking. They knew he was talking about them. And here's how they knew it because they were teachers of the law. And the Jewish law says in Deuteronomy 22.4, if you see that your neighbor's donkey or ox has collapsed on the road, do not look the other way. Go and help your neighbor get it back on its feet. This was more important even than a donkey or an ox. This was a fellow Jewish person lying and dying. And what Jesus was saying by telling this story, he was looking at the Jewish experts who were challenging him, and he was saying to them, you guys, you know, y'all don't even live what you teach. Jesus is critiquing his own. He's, he's critiquing his own. You, they, they didn't like it, but, but that's what you do when you have integrity. You, in, you, you, you critique your own. We're good at critiquing the other group, the other party, the other racial party. Come on now. But when it comes to having the humility to critique our own, Jesus teaches this is a unique practice. I've once told the story, it's not just critique our own group. We need to practice, they practice, critiquing our own selves. I've told this story recently, you'll recall. Years ago, I was counseling with a couple, and uh, the husband had really messed up, done some painful things, had been irresponsible. I was trying to work them through it. The wife was having a hard time. So I asked her to try to facilitate some empathy. Can you think of one thing that you have done wrong over the last week? She stopped and thought, and she said, nope. <laughs> I thought I'd just push it, right? I thought I would challenge her a little bit and, and just see how far it would go. So I thought I'd be outrageous. I said, well, can you think of one thing that you have done wrong over the, in your marriage over the last year, she stopped and she thought, nope. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> Here's what happened. She had justified and normalized her bad behavior. It was so normalized 
that she no longer recognized it as bad behavior. She assumed that she had a right to justify because of what her husband's bad behavior was. And so in response to his bad behavior, she was executing bad behavior, but she had normalized it so that she couldn't even recognize her own bad behavior. Somebody go, hmm. Doesn't that happen that way in our relationship? How many of you have normalized your bad behavior? I, I knew I could, I could point out three things she did wrong in my office. <laughs> Tell the person next to you, practice critiquing yourself. Now, my wife is the teacher in this moment. I'm, let me tell another story. You know, I always talk about the first 10 years of our marriage. We almost ended in divorce at least three times. It was horrendous. I had a lot to do with my own immaturity. And I wish I could tell this story in such a way as to say, here's what I taught my wife. <laughs> I wish I could. But in fact, I have to tell the story in the context of, here's what my wife taught me. I'm talking about critiquing your own self. Well, she came to me one day, and you know how when you're in a, in a miserable relationship, everything is miserable. And she came to me one day, and she said, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying. And she said, the Lord has shown me some things that I need to do better. And I'm going to work on it. And from time to time, we get into whatever. And she'd go back and she'd come back and she'd say, you know what, I I could have said that differently. She said, you know what, I got angry and I overreacted. She just, this became a habit. And then I saw her actually begin to work on herself. Watch this. In the face of dealing with somebody else who doesn't change, it's a good opportunity for you to grow. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> Y'all ain't listening to me. Maybe God tried to grow you. So, so, so I saw her, and watch this. As I watched her work on herself, I discovered, come on now, that I ought to listen more to her because when she was fussing with me, she was also still working on herself. So while she loved me, she loved Jesus even more. And I saw that she was acting out of her integrity. Here's an insight. If your integrity decreases, your ability to persuade also decreases. And so she critiqued herself. And I watched it. And it changed me. Then critique, Jesus teaches us, everybody shall practice. Critique your own. Watch this. And celebrate the other. Say, celebrate the other. The other. other. Here's what we do in the context of conflict, whether it's political or in our homes, whether it's between parents and children or siblings or at our job or in our school. Here's what we do. Folk that we're locked in conflict with. Here's the deal. We otherize them. Everybody say, otherize. Otherize. Now, if you're wondering, yes, I made that word up. You might use the word dehumanize. You might use the word demonize. But I, I like to use the word otherize. Here's what I mean, that, that, that the other person in the conflict, here's what we do. We, 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 we otherize. We define them by all the things they do wrong, and we lose sight of the things they do right. Come on now. We define them by their mistakes and their mess-ups, and we conclude that they are the other inferior to us from a moral standpoint because we get it right and they always get it wrong. Therefore, we can normalize our bad behavior because they are the other. That's right. The other, the other, the other, the other. Uh, The couple I was talking about, the husband was the the other, the other. The, who's the other in your life? Wow. Who, 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 who's the other in your life? When, 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 when Jesus, here's what's fascinating. When Jesus says the despised Samaritan came along, Jesus is not saying he's calling him. He's saying, 
And, the, and to you Jewish leaders who despise Samaritans, one of them came along. And if you're looking, you're going to catch him do the noble thing. And I'm going to celebrate him, even if it makes you mad. Wow. Okay. Fascinating. Now, in order to get the tension, here's what you need to do. May I borrow your imagination? I want you to think of the most despised person in your life. Maybe it's the person you're sitting next to. <laughs> Don't look at them. <laughs> I want you to think of it. Maybe it's somebody political. I don't know. You don't need to tell nobody. I just need you to get that picture in your mind. The most, everybody say despise. Despise, despise. Makes your stomach not up. Despise. And then imagine that person. Watch this. That is the person that Jesus tells you is living better than you. That person, that person. Because Jesus catches them doing some good stuff when you can't see it because you have defined them by all the bad they do. Okay, my wife teaches here. Watch this. She came to me one day in the midst of the 10 years. She was trying to figure out how to stay with me. It was hard. <laughs> she said, in her prayer life, God gave her revelation. So, Every day, she would look for it. Now, here's the point. She knew she had to rewire her brain. Because once you define somebody a certain way, your brain will always see the bad. And in order to reconfigure her affections, if she was going to be able to love me, she had to see something worth loving. Y'all ain't listening to me. So here she is. So she says to me, uh, and then she practices. But she decides every day. She takes a moment and she identified something I got right or some attribute that she loved about me, about me. I was the daddy or this or that. And she would come to me and articulate it and celebrate it in me, not, not with an attitude, but say, baby, I really love this about you. And she would do it day after day after day. And so when the point came that she was tempted to walk out on the other, she remembered that there was more to the other than the bad. Because now she had a list, oh, y'all ain't listening to me, a list of some of the good. Come on now. And she decided that there was enough good worth fighting through the bad. And here we are 39 years later, God using us to change the world. She grew and I grew. So praise God. So you've got to look for in the other party person, in the other person you're in conflict. You've got to look for the good. And when you find the good, you celebrate it. Well, it rewires your mind. I'm talking about how we move together in this season. Somebody shout practice. So, for the next 30 days, I challenge you, turn off the news. If you're exhausted with politics, just stop watching it for 30 days. Get off your Facebook page. Just get off for 30 days. And practice in the meantime, critiquing your own and celebrating the other. <laughs> 